Hello everyone, I'm Zhuyue Xu from NVIDIA. It is my great pleasure to have this opportunity to share our work on image generation and radio genomic learning. The method in this work is based on generative adversarial network. Before we get started, let me first give a brief overview of what to expect in this talk. The goal of this work is to look for connections, if there is any, between the imaging characteristics and their corresponding gene information. Clinically, this is a challenging, sophisticated, and ongoing research area. Yet, it is an interesting topic and potentially impactful if we can somehow decode what genome data is telling us. Our work here is based on GAN to organically fuse the information, which provides an alternative way of thinking. This is a preliminary work. Our humble wish, instead of solving the problem, is to bring some inspiration and discussion to our wing community. So let's move on to take a look at the problem itself, radio genomic correlation. Essentially, this is a cold image pair question, and the very root of the whole problem is whether we understand what the specific code is telling us. Take this famous Monet, for example. The code here is English language. Now, we can have different descriptions from different perspectives, and if we understand the code, we will be able to correctly map this information to the image itself. From the whole content perspective, we can tell that the painting is about a lady and a boy. From the detailed description, we can pinpoint the parasol top and the white flowers below. And from the painting style description, we can appreciate the brush strokes and the color. Each code relates to different characteristics of this painting and all of us can understand their correlation because we understand the context of the code itself, which is English. Now, what if we do not understand the meaning of the code? In this case, I had the English translated to Klingos. Guess few of us can read it, right? Since we do not understand what the code is telling us, even if it is a direct word-to-word -word translation, we are no longer be able to map part of the code to the specific region and the characteristics of the painting. So our aim in such kind of research is to try to recover this relation, which part of the code corresponding to which type of image findings. And we hope to achieve this goal from many code image pairs. Unlike language image pairs, we use as example where the language is a kind of direct description of the image. Gene code to image features relations can be far more indirect and noisy. As we've shown here, the gap and steps between DNA and image semantic features that can be understood by us is far greater than from image to its caption, whatever language it is in, making it a lot more difficult to find the relations in the world radiogenomics. There has been some attempts in radiology and bioinformatics to find the correlation between image features and genomic features. Here is an exacting study published in Radiology 2018. The basic idea is to use three independent steps. Extract image features just from the image, extract the metagene codes just from the sequencing data, and try to find the correlation using statistical methods. Some weak correlations has been identified in this study. But as we can see, for such a three-step modeling process, since each step is independently formed, they can be arbitrary and limited to their own domain. For image, handcrafted texture features may not be a good representation for the task, and the manual scrolling suffers from significant workload and manual vulnerabilities. For metagene, it is clustered with predefined models, which again may not be suitable for a specific task. And more importantly, during the modeling, the image and gene information are actually blind to each other. In other words, those weak correlations are identified without representation fusion. So how about we go a holistic way, say, putting what we have together? This very idea is actually the, our initial motivation for this work. Can we have an alternative way of finding this radiogenomic relationship? maybe end-to-end -end in an organic system. We're not saying that at this time, 
this way will be better, but at least it could be another angle of how we look at this issue. In order to achieve this goal, we first identify a few challenges. First, we need to find a proper way of inject the genomic information so that it can be fused and correlated with the image in a pairwise fashion. Second, how to model the image such that the representation is meaningful for this corresponding. Third, to how to split the nodule from background since region beyond the lesion may be irrelevant to the disease. So a proper object background separation is needed. On the other hand, the interaction region can also hold some value in lesion characterization. So a binary mask may not be an optimal choice. In this work, we propose to use image synthesize to bridge the image and genomic information. We design a multi-conditional, multi-output GAN utilizing both gene code and background image to synthesize paired nodule image and its mask. In this way, image features and gene embeddings can be learned from data in an end-to-end -end manner. Also, we can ensure a smooth object background separation so that unrelated image information gets surprised for radiogenomic correlation. To test this concept, we apply our strategy to a public non-small cell lung cancer dataset with paired image, segmentation, and sequencing data. Here is the structure of the proposed generator. From the background image and gene expression data, it generates a synthetic image with nodule characterized by the genome data and situated within the background image. Meanwhile, it also provides a binary segmentation mask for the generated nodule. Structure-wise, it consists of three parts, encoding of the background image, encoding of the gene expression data, and information fusion for synthetic image mask generation. This generator mainly handles the modeling and fusion of the gene information, and the separation and the blending of the object and background. The representation of both image and gene are fused at different levels of the encoder-decoder structure, and the object soft separation is controlled by a fusion block. In short, the appearance of nodule is mostly controlled by the gene code, while the background image and gene code together controls the overall synthetic image. We followed our baseline methods to use a fusion block to control the separation of object and background. Instead of our previous impending approach, which essentially removes part of the image. The benefit of doing this is that we can achieve a more realistic transition in the final synthesis of the image. And more importantly, such model enables that the gene code can focus on the appearance of the foreground. And more also impacts over the trans fuzzy transition zone between the lesion and surrounding tissues, which better reflects the biology reality. And such fusion is guided by the output of the lesion mask. The challenge of correlation between gene code and the image is addressed by the discriminator. The input of the discriminator is the topo of image, segmentation mask, and the gene code itself. Several losses can be incorporated depending on the variations of the inputs. Potential variations we have real images, a matched gene code, a matched segmentation mask, and they are discriminated against cases containing synthetic image, synthetic mask, as well as mismatched gene code and mismatched segmentation mask. In this way, during GAN training, the network will gradually learn the correspondence between gene code and the image appearance, specific to the lesion region guided by the mask output. Some details of the data we use. In total, we have 130 images together with their tumor segmentation and RNA sequencing data from tumor tissue samples. From gene data, after removing all invalid values, we end up with a vector of around 5,000. For each nodule, we cropped a 60 cubic millimeter VOI and eventually extracted 3,700 2D training slices. For background images, we also cropped VOIs from the, of the same size, which are selected at a random location that is 5 to 25 millimeters 
from the long mask boundaries. Now, let's take a look at the, the synthesized results. Here we list the result based on seven training image and pair training uh, gene codes. The algorithm used the gene information of each of them and together with the background image from the second row to synthesize the image with nodules. The third row here is from our previous inpainting methods, which has no gene control over the appearance of nodule, totally random. And as we can notice, it suffers from the discontinuity along the spherical cropping boundary here. And as compared with a baseline from the fourth row, our proposed methods shown here actually generates more images that are less blurred or corrupted. And also the resulting synthetic images have similar features as the reference training samples. On the other hand, we do notice that the current model, if you notice here, has a certain degree of model collapsing issue. But uh, arguably, the proposed methods still have an edge on the rel relative association of the reference image. For example, this column and this column. As we can see, for the background, uh, for the ground truth image, the, this co column seven has, uh, has better defined boundaries than column five. five. Well, the baseline methods generate a flipped version and uh, the proposed method still keep this observation regarding the boundary fuzziness. And finally, let's check if the generated gene codes do provide some hint in the image appearance. In this figure, the synthetic image are not involved at all. We only look at the original image and comparing their raw and learned gene codes. Here we would like to see whether the similarities in gene codes from a distribution point of view can actually reflect their similarities in image appearance. Supposedly, the closer gene codes can, to a certain degree, be related to a similar image appearance. So, we project both the raw and the learned gene codes to using TSNE methods for visualization. The color are formed by the rough clusters from the proposed coding methods, and we keep the same color across all three maps. As shown, the cluster relationship in the proposed method can be reasonably mapped back to the raw gene vector, meaning that it isn't a huge amount of nonlinearity introduced during the coding process. Meanwhile, the separation becomes much more obvious. The cluster separability of the original gene code is in fact quite weak, I would say, and hence confirms the difficulty of genome clustering if it is treated independently from the image. With the proposed methods, the resulting gene codes can be separated to clusters. And by examining their corresponding image, we can observe that uh, some general correlation between gene clusters and image, their corresponding image such as nodule shape and boundary smoothness can be observed. In summary, our approach opens a new perspective beyond the common practice. The end-to-end -end framework removes the needs for handcrafted features and arbitrary clustering for finding relationships between the image and genetic data. It can provide not only an effective and controllable means to generate diverse nodules, but also a discriminative radio genomic map linking genomic and image features. Of course, this study is quite prelim preliminary with limited amount of data. There is also a couple of missing links from the sequencing data to image features. First is how to map the learned gene code back to the sequencing vector. And second is how to map the image to semantic features. So there are still many unanswered questions. Conducting a study to make a clinical convincing will be a long journey. And hopefully with this paper, we give some inspirations to our community about what we can do with radio genomics using deep learning. Thank you for listening.